in this second look at 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, we're going to focus especially on that glorious purpose of our existence, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, Father, as we focus on our ultimate reason for being as believers in this world, open our hearts to receive this, open our minds to grasp some of the great extent of its significance in the world and in our lives. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are a chosen race, you Christians, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own, his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So the question that this section here is answering is, why are we chosen? Why are we a new race under a new Adam? Why are we part of a kingly line, having been born again into a new race with a king as our father? Why are we called into a priesthood? Why are we set apart for God to be holy? Why do we have a new ethnic identity that is a spiritual one as God's nation? Why are we a people for his own possession? Why did we become God's people. Now you are God's people. Why, even though we had not received mercy, now you have received mercy? Why? Why? This is the kind of question that the Bible loves to answer. The Bible loves to help us think about our reason for being, our purposes in life. And the reason for being is we are all these things, all of them, that, there's the purpose, in order that, few words in this text more important than that word right there, watch out for those purpose clauses because they take you up to the top of why you exist, that you may proclaim. So we exist to be proclaimers and I think on the basis of the wider context of this book, we could say in word, as we, like in 315, be always ready to give an answer for the reason that the hope is that is in us, in word and in good deeds. As in 212, we'll see that we're to do good so that people glorify God. So we proclaim, we exist to make known. We exist not to call attention to ourselves, but to proclaim something about God in word and deed. We exist for the sake of making much of the one who called us. And what we proclaim is the excellencies we are in the business of seeing and savoring and saying excellent things. Christians ought not to be known mainly for pointing out errors. Surely we must. This letter does it. Clearly it does it. Putting ugly names on ugly behaviors. But mainly we exist to talk about excellent things and live out excellent things, beautiful things about him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So he called us. He called us. What is, what is that? He called you out of darkness. It's the same way that we became a race. The same way that we were shown 
mercy. We received mercy. And what we saw last time was, if you go back to chapter 1, verse 3, where we're born again, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He caused us to be born again. Now that is one description of our coming into being as a new race and a royal priesthood into the household of God, God's own possession. We come into being by being born again. Another way to describe how we come into being is that we are called. He called you out of darkness. Jesus stood before the tomb of Lazarus, and inside that tomb was smelly, dark deadness that could see no light and no excellencies. And Jesus stood outside it, and what did he do? He said, Lazarus, come out. And the call created the life and brought Lazarus out into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ, who alone can bring people from dead to live. So whether you're talking about new birth or whether you're talking about the call of God, the same reality is a sovereign work of God by which people who are dead in darkness and can see no excellencies in Jesus. Isn't that the way it is? I mean, you you know people. You're trying to help them see the beauty of Christ and the trustworthiness of Christ and the necessity of Christ, and they're in the dark. They don't see anything. You talk to them about these excellencies because you're doing what you're created to do, and they don't see anything unless... God does this calling work. So that's what we pray for. That is, as we proclaim the excellencies, because we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, we are praying, oh God, do that for them like you did for Lydia in chapter 16, verse 14, I believe, of Acts, where it says, he opened her heart to give heed to the word. He called her. He caused her to be born Again, we exist to proclaim the excellencies of a mercifully calling and uh, regenerating God. Let's just see it confirmed in three or four texts. Here's Isaiah 43, 21. The wild beasts will honor me, jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. So that's what we're seeing in 1 Peter 2.9. We come into being. We get formed for God. And what that means is for his praise. Or here it is again in Isaiah 60.21. Your people shall be righteous. They shall possess the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. That's why I have planted them. That's why I do this work in their lives. They exist to make me look glorious. Or Jeremiah 13, 11, For as the loincloth clings to the waist of a man, so I made the whole house of Israel And the whole house of Judah cling to me, declares the Lord, that, here's that word again, that they might be for me a people, a name, a praise, and a glory. We exist in order to be a praise and a glory to the one who created us and called us out of darkness into light. And one of the key texts in the New Testament I say, I mean, uh, Ephesians 1, 4 to 6, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Why? And there's, instead of that, it's to, unto, unto. What's the purpose of all of this? The purpose is to the praise of his glorious grace. Literally, literally, the glory of his grace. So this is not an isolated statement here in verse 9 of 1 Peter 2. 
you exist that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And the reason, let's close with this thought. Many people will ask, isn't God vain? Isn't God a megalomaniac? Isn't he selfish to to bring us into being for his honor and his glory, his name? No, he's not. Because this is not a heavy calling to proclaim the excellencies of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light is the actual consummation of joy in the highest beauty that exists, namely God. For example, right now, I'm recording this and looking out my window on a magnificent October afternoon. There is no month like October in Minnesota when the trees, like the one outside my window right now, is a mixture of red and gold and orange and yellow. And when the sun shines on it, it is stunning. I walk out into the sunshine on these October afternoons and I look up at at that maple tree and I, I, my, my admiration and my pleasure in the colors outside are so great, but they don't come to consummation until I look at someone and say, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this magnificent? So that's what we're called to do. We're being called here to bring our pleasures in the excellencies of God to consummation by spilling over in admiring them and praising them to other people. This is not God doing anything other than getting glory through bringing us to our greatest pleasure. When God is most glorified in us because we're most satisfied in him and spilling over with proclamation of his excellencies about his light— then he's not a megalomaniac, and his exaltation, his self-exaltation, is the very thing that preserves for us the one thing in the universe that will make us happy forever. His glory, his light, his excellency, and our admiration of it, and our reflecting of it to other people.